Okay, so let's let's start a little bit um, kind of a trivia about uh, human psychology and uh, personalities and, and time management. Okay, so let me see. Let me share the screen. Yeah, I will share this. All right. So a uh, couple of years ago, we had a game uh, designed by a master student, and the game was supposed to convey kind of the time time management uh, principles to students and to staff, such that you get kind of an intuition of what uh, time management is about. So we all know what time management is about. Uh, we understand that if there is a deadline, then we have to kind of uh, work towards the deadline. And if we start late, then we will have to cram uh, some work. We accept that. We all know that. I, I know that as well. Um, but we kind of fail in the intuition of how quickly the quality of our work drops if we are pressed with the deadline. OK, so the game was kind of simple. Um, let me just move that. Yeah, so the game was, um, she designed it that, you know, there was a timeline. Uh, and then along the timeline, you had some tasks to do. So you you were given, not you, like the, the player who was playing the game. So there were some, um, some initial starting points for some tasks. And they were kind of like this. And I think she had four tasks, which kind of were simulating like four assignments. And then there was a kind of a final deadline for all the tasks, which was kind of here. Um, and the students were given like how long the tasks were. So let's say the tasks were kind of yay long. Um, and then, uh, so we have three, yeah, we need one more. So four tasks for um, beginnings and the final deadline. And then, um, you have a budget and the budget I don't remember was like maybe 40 hours uh, or, or 60 hours per week. Uh, and then the final final week. So let's say those are four weeks. There was a final week, which was here uh, one week. Uh, this task was, I don't remember, maybe 20 hours. And then uh, you are free to choose when do you want to start on those assignments? And then you can kind of play it by choosing to start at different times, right? So for example, if you start here to do all four things, you can kind of do them because each thing was um, about a week time long. But if you started the last week, um, you will observe that the quality will go so low that you will fail some of those, uh, some of those tasks uh, because um, you know, uh, if you, so if, if you have 20 hours and you dedicate 20 hours to 20 hours task, you will get 100%. If you dedicate um, 10 hours to 20 hours task, you will get 50%, right? And then at 49%, it's kind of a failure. It's it's F. Um, so then depending like, and this budget, I don't remember like the details, like maybe this one was 60, 60 hours, right? So if all of them are 20, then within 60, you can only do 100% uh, three and one will be 0% or your quality drops, right? So the idea was that you can play this and observe the curves, how the quality curve sh changes shape depending on how late you start with those different tasks. And that, that was kind of an interesting game because we know that, we know how it works, but we just feel that if we cram at the very last kind of period, we can maintain the quality. But the reality is that we can't. So we can't really do, like we sometimes can finish or do some work, but the, the quality of the work kind of drops dramatically down uh, to a point where um, if you start kind of late, some of those things will kind of be uh, muted completely, right? So I, you know, the game was not a, a big success. Uh, she passed her master thesis. She did some experiments with some students. Uh, the outcome was somewhat okay. Like students kind of uh, realized, or whoever played it, I, I, you know, I played it as well. And you kind of realize that um, the the drop off of the of the quality curve is kind of stronger than you might have thought. 
you might have thought that if you kind of wait and cramp more, you can kind of maintain the quality, but uh, it, it is a, a little bit counterintuitive. I mean, if, if you, you know, check it, 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 it makes sense, uh, but it's a, li a little bit against our intuition. So our intuition is that we can kind of uh, maintain the, 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 the work if we, if we do it in the last minute, okay? So that, that's one, one story that I wanted to tell you. Uh, the other story is, let me delete this. The other story is that we, um, it wasn't designed to be an experiment, but uh, when I started teaching here, uh, we had, um, we had on a couple of occasions situation where students were complaining about the assignment deadline, okay? Um, and similarly to what we have now, I'm not saying it's the same situation, it might be different. I'm just saying it, it is a little bit similar. And what happened was, again, we have a timeline uh, and we had, uh, at that time, I think we had three assignments and a project in the course. Uh, the situation was kind of contained more to a single course at, at, at the time. Uh, but, you know, again, we had, you know, assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, and the project uh, deadline. So that was a project deadline. And we had those three assignments along the way. And then the students were complaining that uh, the assignments deadline were too early, right? Um, so... I don't recall if it was the same year, like when, when we did it or whether we did it the, the following year, but I was kind of um, not, it, it was a fourth semester course. And at, in the fourth semester, you kind of expect the students to time management themselves. So we are here to help you, but we are not here to manage time for you. Like you, you have to acquire a skill of being able to manage your time. So what happened was, uh, I moved all the, oops, sorry. I moved all those uh, deadlines and I said, I actually don't care when you do it. You just need to do those three tasks and you need to do the project. And they were all moved to the final deadline. So we had the end of semester and at the end of semester, uh, we didn't have any assignment deadlines through the semester. We had, you know, assignments um, one to three aligned with the project deadline and everything was at the end. So there was no time management done for students by the lecturers. Everything was up to you, okay? Uh, would you like that? So in, in the chat, uh, just tell me if it would be a model that you feel would work for you. Um, that there are no internal deadlines for any of the assignments. You are told what you need to do and everything is at the end. Tell me what do you think about this model? So uh, Ricard is suggesting that he doesn't think it would work very well. Um, so you are wiser than I was, you know, five years ago, <laughs> because I thought that may actually work. <laughs> and it didn't. It was a total disaster. We had like, you know, 30% failure rate in, in, with, with the course, uh, the worst ever, right? It was a very, very bad idea. Um, so that kind of taught us that actually the internal deadlines, the, the kind of that some help with time management for students is helpful. Uh, it is kind of a, a really helping you guys to organize yourself in such a way that you, um, you know, do those things more continuously, right? Because what happened and what often happens is if you have a deadline really far away, if, if the deadline for something, you know, that takes... Um, effectively, those assignments which we have in the course are not super hard. Uh, so most of them are, you know, between eight, maybe to 15 hours, right? So eight to 15 hours, honestly, you can cram on a Saturday, right? You can just do it in one day, right? So if, if you have a task that takes, let's say, 15 hours, it, you uh, have an intuition that it, it becomes really, really urgent, like, you know, two days before the deadline, okay? Because, you know, you can just drop everything you're doing, you can sit down and cram for 15 hours straight, right? Sometimes it doesn't work, but, you know, we do have this uh, sense of how long we have to start worrying about before something becomes kind of a deadline, okay? And I know you have that, like, right? so if the assignment takes, you know, approximately 15 hours, 
you may have a kind of a buffer saying, okay, um, I may need four days or a week, okay? But if, if I'm two weeks away and I, I need this one week buffer, then just don't worry, right? So people like if they have a couple of things which take, you know, those 15 or 20 hours, they don't worry until kind of that, that point here, right? Around here. And then if, if you have multiple things and you start worrying now, then it's too late because you kind of have a limit of what can be cramped in that time and you have multiple things, right? But if you have individual deadlines, uh, then you kind of split this cramming into those individual slots before the deadlines and those internal deadlines kind of work really well, okay? Um, so that experiment with having everything at the end was kind of bad, but at the same time, you know, you know, part of the learning is about time management and kind of uh, making sure that things kind of work. Uh, but we, um, you know, you, you, you should by six semester be able to organize your time yourself because you will be given a bachelor thesis, which is a, a very long project. There's a one semester long project and there are no internal deadlines. Like you will have to set the internal deadlines for yourself. And there is no pushing that the project uh, back, like the deadline for the bachelor project, that's not possible, right? So with the bachelor project in the sixth semester, what happens is you are in this kind of a bad situation where you are kind of given like this, you are giving the final deadline, you say, okay, here you start, and there is nothing in the middle, right? And if you don't organize yourself in the middle and you kind of, do what you would do for assignments that you kind of say, oh yeah, how long the bachelor thesis is going to take? That's not going to work because the bachelor thesis actually takes kind of a long time and you have to be working consistently those, you know, 40 hours a week through those weeks. If you don't, then you will have this kind of a bump at some point or even higher later on where you have to work, you know, 80 hours a week or 100 hours a week and that becomes really hard. Um, so to, to lower this, this kind of a curve of time demand, because it, it's the depends, dependency between how much time you need uh, in, a, in a function of what quality you will achieve, right? Because if you, if you spend that amount of time here where, while you're needing this, then you have this quality drop, right? Because you, you're going to not achieve the 100% the quality that you could have if you spent this amount of time, right? So it's... Um, it's a physical limitation on one hand because you can't work more than, you know, 24 hours a day, uh, even less, uh, let's say, you know, 15. Um, and then there is um, the, the, like, once you hit the physical limit, then your quality drops. So you do less and you achieve less, right? Um, sometimes um, things like this happen. There are kind of unexpected events which push you that you need to work more. Um, and, um, yeah, so I will, I will stop recording for a moment. Uh, let's see. Where is the record button? Pause. Yeah. Let's resume. Okay. So th then there is, um, extra, extra thing about motivation, right? So, um, there is, yeah, of course you know that, uh, so let's do vim all right so let's there are kind of a two factors which kind of motivate us um so one is um extrinsic motivation and that's what's that well this is great points uh awards salary um what else praise okay all those things those are kind of a, a, a extrinsic motivators which motivate us and they do motivate you too right so grades i often have discussions with students about grades and grades and the kind of recognition of your work is a, a big motivator it, it is a big factor right um but personally, for me, and, and, and it is my bias, um, it doesn't matter, right? I actually don't care what grades you guys get, right? That, that's not what motivates me. I, I honestly don't care. Like, if there was course with no grades, I, I would prefer that. I know it wouldn't work because it is an important motivator for you. 
Uh, but it was not when I was a student and it never was for like throughout, throughout my life. Like that's not something that really motivates me to do that. That's not the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, so there is a, a, a second thing which is called intrinsic motivation. And this is, um, this is um, things that kind of internal to a person, okay? So why do I read a book or why do I learn a new programming language? I'm, I'm not going to get a new grade for it and I'm, I'm, I may not even use it, right? So why? Why I'm, I'm doing it? Well, I'm kind of curious, right? I'm curious and I want to learn. Um, I want to learn. Um, why I'm a teacher? Why I'm teaching you? Why I'm spending extra time designing those kind of uh, things and, and discussing with some of you? Because that, that's what motivates me. I, I'm kind of passionate about you guys learning new things. And it would be awesome if like in five or 10 years time, I'm using a programming language which one of you designed and one of you invented, right? That would be the reward I'm looking for, right? So I'm, I'm, I don't care about like my salary or, or my kind of time here or whatever. It's like you guys are, are, are motivators for most of the teachers. Academics become academics not because it's a high paying job. It's actually a shitty paying job, right? I would have earned probably twice as much going to the industry uh, and being a programmer than sitting here. But there are two factors. Like one, this intrinsic motivator is really, really nice. Uh, it, it really drives academics kind of throughout their careers. And second, you see kind of effect of, of your work in the people that graduate and they go to industry and they do clever things and they design new things and, and so on, right? So that's what kind of drives me. And you have to ask yourself what drives you, right? Um, and that, that is, um, that's a big deal because there is a limit of what um, extrinsic motivation, motiv motivators can achieve okay uh there is a, a ceiling so um in um in an industry and in salaries there is a kind of research which suggests that uh once people reach a certain salary level um they actually they, they work quality drops because they um the, the intrinsic motivator which was driving them which was pushing them to reach that salary level kind of stopped working and then beyond that salary level, they became become kind of actually very unproductive. Uh, they become lazy and they become kind of whatever, right? You, you can find research like that. Uh, but there is no limit um, on the int intrinsic one, right? Um, if I am paid, like I'm often, often paid for doing contractual work for some reviews and things like this, and then if I spent, you know, 10 hours on it, and if I spent 20 hours of it, it makes a difference to me. And it kind of makes me uh, like, I feel pain doing too much of it, right? Because I feel I'm, I'm like, I'm either bored or I don't want to do it anymore or whatever, like, because this intrinsic motivator stopped working, right? But if I'm reading a book or I'm learning a programming language that I'm kind of passionate about, I can spend 100 hours or 200 hours and I, I just want to spend more time. I want to spend all my time on it, right? Um, so there is no limit on the intrinsic one, right? Uh, and that's um, intrinsic motivators. And this is what you need to ask yourself. Um, you have to ask yourself, is it something I really want to do? Because if it's not, maybe you don't do this, right? Maybe you do something else. You, you do something that will drive you, that will drive you to do 100 hours weeks, right? I'm not saying doing 100 hours a week is healthy or you should do it. You shouldn't. But you should have this capacity of being able to do that, right? So if I was in a job where after 40 hours of work, I would feel I don't want to do it anymore. That would be a, a bad job to have. Um, I'm in a job where I'm working, you know, 60 and I, I'm happy to do, do more because that's like, that doesn't feel like job. It feels like I'm, I'm doing something I like doing. Uh, so that's, again, it's kind of a segue a little bit, but you need to kind of ask yourself, why, what, what is the problem? Like what, what happened that um, I'm not doing this? Like, am I um, like not interested in this, or am I do prefer doing something else, and so on? And I'm 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 not saying 
it's it's like it's black and white of course it's not like you have your hobbies you have your life you want to hang out you you need social life you you need everything right um but school is part of it and at school you will need to kind of fulfill some some of the requirements and um sometimes it requires more than than it, it is okay that 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 is um, nominally given, right? So um, addressing uh, Sebastian uh, comment that um, people have worked, you know, uh, 50 hours on, on assignment two and you only kind of 50% done, right? Um, so if you want to spend more, you would need more time. And that, that brings me back to this, um, to, to the uh, discussion that we had before and to, to the core of the discussion, which is this uh, timeline, right? So um, there are so, so th there are multiple problems. Uh, one problem is that you are given a task. Uh, so you are giving a task here. Um, so this is the kind of the, uh, where the task starts. And this is the kind of the deadline for the task. And then, um, because we have multiple courses and you have multiple um, kind of um, obligations to do, th those things can kind of be uh, compounded, right? So the deadline, as, as we observe for this semester, for some of the courses, here we had multiple deadlines for multiple courses, right? Um, so here there are already two problems. So one problem is, um, let me do this. So the the uh, the first problem is what we discussed about time management, um, because you have this mini co-occurrence of activities such that maybe one problem is that here there is kind of a, a spike. So so let's say the tasks were around twenty hours. Let's assume, and then you didn't start from the very beginning, and then you have kind of a compounding kind of effect towards the towards the deadline and and here you have this kind of a low you know more uh um, harder kind of time to cram more things right so time management might be a problem but sebastian is saying no it's not a problem because i was already kind of working consistently kind of you know um let's say again we have like this and you start here and you work consistently you you kind of work you know uh 50 hours or more uh, on this particular task, and you had other tasks that you had to do by the deadline as well, and then you didn't manage that, right? So the second problem is uh, workload. So we might have, oops, um, workload, um, but it's, um, it's it's a combination of workload plus estimation, right? And plus student variability. So this one, I think we are kind of on the same page. Uh, we, I think this one is kind of easy and we understand. And that with this one, uh, there is not much. Um, so so for, for addressing this one, uh, students need to work more consistently. And then um, teachers can coordinate more to help students with time management okay so if we coordinate more um and we don't give you co-occurring deadlines but we kind of spread them such that you know uh this is the deadline for the first task in one course and this is the deadline for a, a, another course then you have this kind of time management done for you right such that you don't need to plan it yourself like oops sorry uh where you work on what um uh, yeah this drawing is not that perfect but let's let's say okay so we we have uh time again uh we have uh task one task two task three and we have a common deadline okay and that's one model and that makes you do time management yourself uh or the second model is where the teachers can help is like okay let's split the deadlines like this and effectively we, you know, you can be given task like here, but you can split the work. Okay, task one, I will work here, task two here, and task three here. And then you have kind of a time management more uh, organized for you, right? Uh, so that's, those are those two points. Um, 
yeah so i will come back to that again um so the, uh, the this is what we both need to work like me as a teacher and, and you as a student and other teachers and I, me as a coordinator i i would need to do that right but then we have the second problem and the second problem is a little bit more more difficult and this is what um sander and sebastian are talking about that um if we have uh, let's say we sim simplify the situation just to one assignment, not combination of assignments. Okay, um, so if we have like this, and we have the time, we have a task. Uh, the task is estimated, let's say, to thirty hours, um, and the deadline is here. Um, and let's say we have two weeks, right? Uh, two weeks. So if you if the estimation was correct, then you would have 15 hours here and 15 hours here. Um, and then that's just for one task. And then if you have four courses and you have like multiple tasks, then you would end up with like multiples of that because the different courses will put some workload on you, right? So let's say we have one course which is not heavy and then three courses which are heavy, then you know, you end up having kind of a 45 hours weeks, right? Um, and that assumes that this estimation was correct and then that everybody is the same, which both are not true, right? We know they are not true. Um, so um, what will happen if this estimation is too small, right? If in reality, you actually have to work twice 60 hours on, on an assignment, right? Well, of course, that doubles suddenly, right? Um, how, um, let, let's say this estimation for 30 hours is for an average student. Um, and an average student is kind of like, let's say a strong C student, right? So for a, a weaker student or for a student who needs a bit more time, how likely it is that a student will need more than 30 hours? Very likely, okay? So this, Kind of th th this is a problem uh, of how much work we're planning to do, uh, and we as a program, uh, as teachers, we can lower that, right? So we can um, check if the workload workload requirements um, are adequate or not, um, and then kind of lower the requirements, right? Um, how, how we can do that? Well, we need some data from you, right? So we, we but by, and by data, I mean, we need some kind of a concrete examples of where the required work was too much. So for example, Sebastian is saying, okay, I've been doing 50 hours for assignment two. Uh, the estimation was 30. So I'm already, you know, 80% over my budget. Uh, and I feel I'm only 50% done, okay? So if other people kind of document it and they report it in when, when the assignments are due, then we get this data, right? If you include also when you started on, on the assignment, uh, that would help because that would kind of uh, negate a potential influence of the first problem that you waited too long and you didn't start early, right? Uh, because having an 80 hours week doesn't mean the assignment was too hard. It could mean that you started too late to work on it, right? If you started very early, if you started in March and you still have those uh, 80 hours week, that means that is probably not the problem. This is the problem, right? So, but we, we need to be able to, to tell the difference. Uh, so, so document, that's why I told you um, document what you're doing, when you're doing it, when you started it and so on. We have a Git repo, you can kind of qu you know quickly check when did you commit the first commitment? Uh, and then how long you worked? Like, okay, Marius, I started kind of early in March. I worked, you know, 50, 60 hours. I'm not done. Something is wrong. Yeah, reasonable. Very, very good argument. Okay. Uh, but if you just say, come on, we're working too much. We're working 80 hours a week. Okay. But why? Why do you work 80 hours a week? We don't know that. Like, we, and to know that, we need a, a little bit more data. Um, so please help us, uh, please put kind of, uh, some of the documentation like, like Sebastian is doing here, that that's a very good argument. Uh, and then we can kind of work with that. Um, so that's kind of a workload. 
I'm not saying workload is, um, I'm not saying those estimates are always wrong. The, the, the estimates we're trying to do and we gain some experience from previous years are most of the time okay, right? So the way I'm, I'm doing the estimates is I'm usually doing the assignment myself. I usually try not to be super efficient. I like, you know, I browse web and I, I check things and then I measure how long it took me and I, I double the time. So I, I, I'm expecting an average student to be, you know, twice as slow as I did it. A good student be reasonably similar and then a, a slower students will be slightly slower, right? So like doubling the time is good, you know, um, ballpark figure. It, it's not possible to be super precise. Like it, it's not, that, that's the nature of software development. You can't tell exactly. Like you can get stuck on an issue and I, I sometimes do. Uh, I have a task which is 10 hours and then I get stuck on one issue which takes 10, 10 hours and then from a task 10 hours it, it became 20 hours just like this right I just have one bug or one thing that suddenly doubles my time yeah that happens um, also the productivity of people is different like we are not the same and you are not the same they, they will be students among you who will be you know 10 times faster than you uh, and there will be students who will be 10 times slower than you, right? The distribution is huge, uh, the, I mean, the, um, the spread. So, so those estimates are not very scientific and they, are not, uh, they cannot be super scientific, but we, we kind of try to work like in the bounds of the, of the average student such that we get some, you know, some plan. Uh, and, and if the plan was wrong, yeah, you know, you tell us. Uh, you tell us that you started when, how long it took you, and that the task was too big. And that happens, like, and that could have happened with the assignment to in our course, right? So that the task could have been uh, too big. Although, um, if that happens, usually what happens after is the, uh, the grading get rescaled, right? So the original requirements, uh, if nobody could fulfill them and it was obvious that the task was too hard, get kind of remapped re 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 to slightly different uh, requirements such that um, you know majority of students will fit in the kind of the, the curve. It's not that we are comparing you. So um, that, that is kind of, I, I don't want to dive into this topic because it, it's a little bit tricky topic to, to discuss, uh, but it, it is important to understand that um, we cannot plan up front, especially for courses that never happened before, some things that are perfect, and we have to adjust what has happened to what actually happened, right? So if I have an assignment for the very first time, and I don't know how long it, it's going to take the students, I made an estimate, but I, I know I could have been wrong, then based on your data, I will re realign it to what actually happened. So if majority of you couldn't finish it in the kind of a, a given time, it will be obvious to me that the estimate or the kind of requirements were too big. And then I will readjust it and take it into account in grading, right? Um, sometimes that happens with exams too. So we had uh, an exam with Christopher. Uh, yeah, maybe I will not record that. So I am sidetracking a little bit and we will talk about exams after the course. That, that's a, another big topic to, to discuss. Anyway, um, this estimation thing, the workload, and this, we cannot do anything with student variability. Some of you will have to work harder. Uh, but if I get like one email or two emails saying, okay, I'm, I'm lagging behind, that means those uh, slower students will need extra help. We need extra tutoring sessions or things like this, okay? Email me or email Tom. If I get, you know, 20 students telling me, okay, we, we're lagging behind, that means, okay, um, problem is not student variability, problem is with, with estimation or with workload, okay? So also tell us, right? Um, so the, yeah, there is a question, what was the estimation for assignment two? Um, in, in, in our course, the estimation was uh, 30 to 40 hours. So it took me 15 hours, but I, I then I spent additional some time. So originally I, I spent 15 hours to do everything and it was working, uh, but I was not quite happy with some of the things. So I, I spent another five hours on it. So the original estimation was 30, but I, I doubled it 
uh, I mean, it was 15. I doubled it, but then because I've added it extra time, I, I doubled it. So it was something between uh, 30, 40 hours, right? So approximately, approximately, let's say it was 40 hours. Uh, there was approximately four weeks to do it. So it was approximately 10 hours per week, right? Um, for, for this assignment. Um, and that seemed reasonable. And even if you need to double it, that means, okay, 20 hours per week. Uh, so maybe you will need to work 80 hours, but that's still like um, 20 hours per week. Again, it's not something unusual. That is, um, it should not be consistently the, the case, right? But it occasionally happens that some 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 task or some combination of task will make you work harder uh but um it, it, uh, you know um plan for having a 20 hours per week workload for a, a single course um that can happen if it happened by by chance with three courses that's that's bad right uh and that means uh, we will need to tone down some, some of the things, um, especially because of the fourth semester we have now. Um, yeah, fourth semester is quite heavy because you actually have four courses which are potentially heavy, right? We, we don't have a slack. Uh, that, that situation is kind of bad. Uh, typically, we would like to have a situation where you have like two maybe three hard courses and one which is kind of an, an easier one like a breather and then you have this kind of situation happening with two or maybe three courses right but if you have four courses then you end up as as uh, one of you was saying you end up with 80 hours a week uh because you need to multiply 20 by you know by four and then 80 hours weeks that you can do for one week but you cannot do it for like you know um 10 weeks, right? You cannot do it for a semester. Uh, maybe you can do it for two weeks, but that that's you, you're gonna get a burn burnout. Um, so that's bad. Um, so yeah, the bottom line is uh thank you for um um telling me and 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 uh, Marius and Tom about the situation. We're trying to and I'm wearing my uh coordinator hat now. We are trying to address it. We need to dig dig into what is the problem. So what I did, I've asked all the teachers to tell me those estimations, those um, like um, the time the time frame given for assignments uh, and the estimation of workload workload per assignment assignment. And I know the estimations are imprecise. So, so again, you know, uh, when, when I said, okay, that uh, my assignment two was planned, planned for 40 hours over four weeks, that, that kind of results in approximately 10 hours a week. And then I know there is a mistake and I may again need to double that, right? To have a buffer, right? That, that's already with a buffer. That's already a conservative estimate. Uh, but like this one is the conservative one, then I, I need to take this into account. And then I need to take into account all the other courses, right? So if it happened that this kind of compounds, then we need to either spread them in time or kind of lower the expectations. Uh, so that's what I ask from the teachers. And then I would like you to also tell me um, honestly, like where is the problem and how can we help? If the problem was with time management because you kind of waited for the, for the deadlines which co-occurred, you, you need to tell me because then I will tell the teachers to spread the deadlines such that we don't have that, that we will help you with time management. So if the problem was you starting late, I mean, Maybe it's hard to admit it, but it would be better for you to admit it because then we can do something with it. Okay, so I'm I'm not judging you, and I'm not saying oh it's your fault or it's uh, whatever, right? Whose fault is it? Doesn't matter. What matters is that we need to fix it, right? That's what matters. Uh, that we, it's it's not about putting blame uh, on teachers or deadlines or you. 
Uh, it's about finding what caused the situation and then addressing it such that it will not reoccur, right? Uh, so you can send the summary like about this, um, the course, yeah. Um, so for, for the uh, advanced programming, send it to me. Uh, for the other courses, it's up to you. You can send it to me, but not as a lecturer in this course, but as a coordinator. You can send it to Tom, or you can send it to the lecturer, okay? Uh, maybe you can send it to the lecturer and to me or Tom, because then uh, we will make sure that the information doesn't get lost, okay? So for this course, send it to me. Uh, for other courses, uh, send it to me and the lecturer uh, because the lecturer should know also that they maybe they are uh, overestimated or maybe uh, they uh, put too much workload so, such that they should get a feedback but we will kind of coordinate internally between the uh, the lecturers anyway and then Tom and me should get the should get the summaries um, does it sound you know is that um, okay with you guys I know for a fact that the time management is, is a problem, so we will address it anyway. Um, if you do the summaries, then we will know uh, like how to uh, you know, rearrange the, the workload such that we probably, what we will probably do is we will coordinate between the courses and make two of them do assignment kind of co-occurring and then having a period where the two the two courses okay let me draw it so one one idea is like this because in the fourth semester we have four courses right so we have four courses one two three four so what we can do is we can say okay um let let's say we have um four things to do so we have uh like this like uh, four deadlines right so this is the final deadline. And then we have some deadlines in, in between. So maybe what we will do is we will kind of uh, organize that two courses will have kind of an assignments in that period. And then these guys will have here and then here and here, right? Such that wh while you're working on this, you have a breather from the other two courses. And while you're working on this, you have a breather from those courses. So then the assignments are kind of are spread in such a way that they don't co-occur. They will co-occur with two courses because you know uh, we can't solve everything, but at least you will only have to deal with two courses at the time and then to do time management or planning for like for two courses at the time, not for four, right? And that, that should already help. Um, we we I don't know like we will discuss with the other teachers like what uh, what else can can we do to kind of help you to to achieve you know your best. Um, so that's that's the general situation between all the courses. Now I'm wearing my advanced programming hat, and it's the same story. Like I want your feedback. Yeah, send me the the summaries and so on. Uh, and also tell me how you want to deal with this. So I, I've heard from the students who couldn't manage. Uh, is there anyone who is happy to submit today and don't want to work on assignment two anymore? So is there any one of you who kind of worked, managed to finish whatever they plan to finish, would like to submit today and don't work on it anymore? Because I, I, so the plan is that I will extend the deadline. I will give everybody extra two weeks. I, I, as I told you, I don't care. I mean, if the deadline was at the end of the semester, for me, I, I, I have no problem with that, right? My objective is for you to learn and you will learn by doing more. And that's what I like, okay? So if you want extra two weeks or if you want extra four weeks, no problem. Uh, you know, I know if I give you extra four weeks, you will not do anything for the next three weeks you will do some things for the next extra week, right? So that, that's, yeah, you know, we need to agree what is the reasonable extension such that it will motivate you to actually do stuff, right? So that's one point. Um, so what is the reasonable uh, extension? Um, so that's, uh, that's the question to you. Um, I will do what you will tell me uh, because I hope you have enough self-reflection to be able to tell me what, what would you like, right? Um, and then um, 
I want to know who is done such that, um, you know, it would be unfair for those people who are done today to be treated like everybody else because they clearly managed and they clearly put extra effort to be on the deadline, right? I, I, I feel, you know, and you probably feel that those people who are kind of ready today uh, they kind of uh, a little bit exceptional They because they managed, right? So uh, if they are done and they don't want the extension, then uh, again, um, tell me, and then I will take in, into account, you know, with, with, with the grading such that you will get extra, you know, credits for being done on time. Um, other, you know, Again, it's not something I want to enforce or like push on you. Like it's your choice. Like uh, we are in, in this together, right? If if the class feels those people should be treated like everybody else, I will do it like I will do it like this. If if, if the uh, you know class feels yeah, it's reasonable for them to get extra credit for being on time. Uh, <laughs> I, honestly, I don't care. Like it, it's like. Um, it's a co-creation of the learning environment with you guys. So I expect you to tell me, right? Maybe you should have kind of a class meeting uh, and then the, the class representative will tell me what, what would you like to happen, right? Uh, I'm agnostic. Like I will do what you will tell me to do, right? So with this assignment, I'm open for your suggestions to do what you feel is the best way forward, okay? Um, my suggestion is that I will extend by a week or two weeks such that the people who want to uh, achieve a better grade or to finish it or to, to do what they were planning to do to have this extra time. And I'm very happy to do this extra time. Uh, for people who don't want to do any more, to work anymore on assignment two, and they feel that they are done, they achieved what they wanted to achieve, uh, I'm happy for them to be finished, not, don't have the extension, and then be treated a little bit differently, okay? Um, um, okay, all right, so, so um, yeah, I, I have to wear my different hat now <laughs> because uh, uh, the, the comments in the chat suggest that there is a, a course which is actually tipping the, the workload uh, more than the other courses, and we have to deal with it kind of separately, okay? Um, so, um, all right, so, so maybe my suggestion is maybe let's isolate that uh, in such a way that we will deal with this course, uh, with the um, AI course separately, and then with the other courses on a course per basis, right? Such that we will um, do something special for the course, for the AI course, the way you feel that should be done. And I, I can try to make it happen. Uh, for for uh, advanced programming, um, I'm, as, as a lecturer, right? Um, I am happy with your going forward, okay? Um, I see. Yeah, so that, that is kind of a not easy to separate those things because they are co-dependent. Um, co um, yeah, I, I, I get your point. I, I agree with this. Uh, but at the same time, we, that, we just need to go forward. So somehow we, we need to uh, untangle it, OK? So one, one way of untangling it is untangling the advanced programming. Um, so just tell me what you feel is fair and what you should happen. Uh, I, I, I know, I, I mean, it would be easier for you to have this untangled by me, uh, but I, I honestly don't know how to untangle it, right? I, I, I feel uh, whatever I enforce might be uncomfortable to some of you. So I want you to make a collective decision, right? So uh, make a collective decision within the course, within the advanced programming course, uh, what you feel is the fair way forward. Um, as, as I said, 